Between 1982 and 1983, publisher Parker Brothers released four different Atari VCS games utilizing the popular Star Wars license. 1983 saw Star Wars Death Star Battle, Star Wars Jedi Arena, and Star Wars the Arcade Game, but none of those ever matched the popularity of the single 1982 release, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John, and I am a Gen X Grown Up. Thanks so much for clicking on this video. You know, in the early 80s, licensing popular IP for video games was really starting to take off, but it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to know that the VCS was pretty limited, and fitting an entire movie's plot and action scenes into a game just wasn't going to work. So, what Rex Bradford and Sam Gelman did for The Empire Strikes Back is choose a single, memorable section of the film around which to build the game. And they chose the battle on the planet Hoth between Snowspeeders and Imperial Walkers. And based on how well regarded this game is decades later, I think they nailed it. Let's go take a play through The Empire Strikes Back right now. Here it is then, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. And when you first put in the cartridge, it plays that theme. We start it again. <laughs> that John Williams theme, right? Which is the force later in the game. Uh, so there are some options here. You have a difficulty switch, but the difficulty switch, all it does is it changes the size of the landing pad. Like if you look down, see the little, uh, the size of that uh, valley getting shorter. When you land down there, it's how you repair your snow speeder. And on uh, high difficulty, that's just, uh, it's just smaller is all. So, uh, and the game, we're going to hit start here. And the game also has 32 different game options, but really it's just a few variations on the main game. You have smart bombs that these AT-ATs shoot at you. You have solid body, which you'll notice like I can fly through the AT-AT here, and it's no harm. But if you uh, if you have the game options set, they can actually be hazardous. You can you know, collide with them, kind of thing. It takes 48 shots to take down an Imperial Walker. And uh, they change color as you damage them. Oh, and I just hit a bomb port, which I was going to talk about here. But in addition to the 48 shots, you also have the choice of hitting one of those flashing spots on their body. Uh, which I can rarely do. Like, there's one right now. If you can hit that, their head's usually in the way. Sometimes it's on their back, sometimes it's on their front. I have heard people say, ouch, this game has no variety. It's the same thing over and over. There's no strategy. I totally disagree with that. There's so much going on that maybe isn't obvious unless you like read the instructions and play it a few times. There's a line of walkers coming in, but they're in a line, and so they can only go as fast as the slowest one. So I've just weakened the front walker, so I leave him alone, and then I come down here and shoot the other guys, because they can't pass him. <laughs> so they just will slow down, and it gives you more time to defeat the other bad guys. So you see, now I have brought him down to yellow, which is near death. So now I can go destroy the guy in the front. And you can see the little radar at the bottom. You see that frontmost guy? Get up here. There we go. He's gone. And now, but I have a slow one, because he's already damaged. And then I go after the next one. <laughs> You've already seen that if you stay alive for two minutes, you get the force, that music. And if you are damaged, like I'm yellow right now, each snow speeder can land twice. So if I land in that little valley, boop, I'm fixed. But you can only do it, again, two times per speeder, and you can never recharge that. So you have exactly twice. Ooh, I just blew up him on the exhaust port thing. Ooh, oh, and I got hit. I never played with the solid body walkers. I never played with the smart bombs because, ow, dang it. There's, there's plenty of challenge in this game as far as I'm concerned. Now, if one walker gets to the far right-hand side, that's where the game is. It's, if one gets past you to the was it Echo Base, I think. You can't shoot him in the legs, either. So I got him down to yellow, so now I can go defeat the guy in the front, because there we go. And I pass up this guy and go after the next. Of all the 32 variations, like I said, it's the solid body, it's the smart bombs, or uh, multiplayer, if you want to play that. Now, whenever I have the force, this is your chance to just sit at their nose and pepper. If I can get a couple guys down to yellow while I have the force, you really had, you made good use of it. There are three yellow now. One, two, three. I can go kill all those guys. Actually, just two of them. And keep the third one around. <laughs> now, I'm not going to stop the video in the middle here, but I will remind you, as you probably already know, we have a merch store. And yes, I found some Star Wars stuff in it. I've highlighted it on our page. There's even a cool shirt called... It has... Ooh, it says Rebel Scum in that Star Wars font because, uh, you know... 
you know, to be an Imperial backer, you want to support the Rebels. And, uh, you know, it's over at GenXGrownUp.com slash merch. And uh, every every shirt or phone case or sticker we sell, it supports more videos like this. So if you're ever in the market for something cool, check there first. Maybe we have it. And you can uh, you can help us out while you're helping yourself out. That'd be awesome. Oh, I'm about to get shot. Okay. I guess it's fair to say that it's repetitive in that there's not different things to do. Ooh, but can I land? Yeah. But the things you're doing, there is strategy involved. And it to me, it is very fun to kind of maneuver around. Like I said, I never needed the more difficult versions of this game. I just, I find it fun as is. Oh, ow, I'm nearly dead. Now, almost invariably, my game ends when I have run out of uh, ships because they never get to my base. Because if you use this strategy to keep them back, you really can go for a good long while. Now, they start shooting more frequently, it seems like. You have to kind of time it out. I tend to get in front of them. You can also try to attack from behind. And there's a really interesting strategy. Since there can only be one of their bullets on the screen, get one to shoot at you. Like, uh, get this guy to shoot at me. There we go. Oh, and he shot me. You can come up behind. Oh, man, I'm getting... I gotta land. Oh, I'm getting peppered. Quick, get down there. This game just has a sense of constant frenetic action that doesn't exist in a lot of 2600 games. Ouch. <laughs> You've got to really concentrate, and it's fast-paced, and you're getting shot at a lot, and you get the sense you're moving around on this planet. I think that's why it's so fun. It's like adventure in a different way. It's There's a world-building involved. Of course, it doesn't hurt that you have the entire Star Wars mythos backing it up, so you can imagine who's... That's probably Luke Skywalker's snow speeder, you know? Yeah. This is a good run. I probably haven't done a serious, like, try to get a high score run on this in a while, so... Ah, I'm doing all right. Ooh! <laughs> about a hit away from dying. Just take my last landing. Now, each guy can only land twice. Okay, he's gone. Look how close they're getting to the right. Like, they're getting toward the base. Ugh. Now, what this doesn't have is any of the variation of, like, Oto cables or different ways that you might fight them, right? That's just not in this game. They chose a very specific subset of what happened in the movie. Look how fast they're moving. I'm going to use my force to weaken another guy. Oh, I never... They're just... Oh, they're giddy up. Uh, come on. And hear the thump, 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 how much faster they're running. Ugh. Even the guy in the front, I don't think he's doing much work at slowing anybody down because he's they're so far behind him, but it will be a barrier to keep people from going any farther. Oh, he's almost close. Hear that alert? Broop, broop. You got to go finish him off before he gets to the far right. Mm. Oh! Last ship. I thought that was the last one. This is the last ship. All right. Whoo! He's yellow. All right, get the guy in the front. Look how close he is. Come on. Yeah, I know. Dead. Pass him up. <laughs> oh, I don't know how many times I thought I was... There we go. I was going to I was gonna say, I don't know how many times I thought I was dead, and I wasn't, and now I am. So that's a 2,600-point run. So that's it. The Empire Strikes Back. Thank you for the suggestion. Love playing this one. This is great. As a footnote, I got a chuckle when I read that sci-fi author and notable curmudgeon Harlan Ellison blasted this game as a, here we go, shamelessly exploitative little toy, the latest icon of the imbecile industry, and a time-wasting enterprise with the potential to emerge as the most virulent electronic botulism of all. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what The Empire Strikes Back ever did to Harlan Ellison, but he was in the minority, as this is regularly included among Atari fans' most popular cartridges. <laughs> Look, these videos are so much fun. I'm just getting started, so please keep those requests coming down in the comments for other games you'd like to see get this treatment, and I will keep on doing it. And of course, I will throw links over my shoulders here and here to some other recent games I've highlighted. I certainly hope you found something to enjoy in this video, and I can't wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.